Hey everybody, welcome to Nightliner Tattoo. Thank you very much for watching, I really, really do appreciate it. This one is going to have two or three tattoos in it, one of which is definitely going to be a tattoo that I've done today. Um, one of my customers, Alan, unfortunately, and completely out of the blue, his mum passed away just Wednesday past. Um, my condolences to you and your family, Alan, buddy. So I've done a tattoo for his mum this morning, so, uh, you know, Every now and again, someone will happen in tattooing where it just makes me realise, like I never ever take tattooing for granted, never. Some tattooists I know do, and they get too big for the fucking boots, they get all, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. One tattooist I know even told a, a lady that the drawing her dead son done was beneath him. Sometimes things happen and they make you realise just how much a part of someone's life being a tattooist can make you. Whether it's, you tattoo someone who's got like a, 13, 14 year old son or daughter and then five or six years later they turn 18 and you're tattooing them and then you know you hear about how this person's doing, how that person's doing and how their life's going and then somebody comes along and they say oh yeah my mum didn't wake up on Wednesday you know it's hey. like but it also makes me realise just how important tattooing can be don't get me wrong I'm the first person to get a stupid fucking tattoo for no reason whatsoever and don't think, well don't watch this and think I need a reason to go and get a tattoo you don't I've heard people say to me, I really want one, but nothing important's happened. You know, what, you're waiting on somebody dying, you're waiting on somebody being born, you don't have to. Just go and get a fucking tattoo. It's fun. But at the same time, something like this can happen, and it just makes me realise how the, the power of tattooing, you know. Um, so yeah, that, that, was, that was special. So that's definitely going to be in the video, as well as some other couple of others, maybe. I'm not quite sure. But um, what I would also like to do, is I'm going to try something. So... We're going to start off by doing, I would like you to tell me underneath, in this video, your first tattoo story. The, your very first ever tattoo that you got. Great story, bad story, indifferent, great tattoo, bad tattoo, doesn't matter. Monica! Monica! And in a minute, I'll tell you mine, and we can see how we get on, alright? A wee bit of interaction, I think, is what's missing for the channel. So my first tattoo, I was the grand old age of 14 and um, I really wanted this. And then that, that eagle design was just so striking so I used to go into the shop all the time. David Thompson, Dragon's Lair in Gorgie in Edinburgh and uh, yeah I was 14 and he knew my uncle, my uncle that died not long ago. and. Um, so I used to go in all the time, all the time, and I used to look at the eagles and look at the eagles, and I really fucking wanted an eagle, you know, I, I just wanted an eagle. And uh, I went in, and uh, my uncle had said to me, look, I spoke to him, um, he's going to tattoo you, just tell him, you know, what you want and it'll be fine. And I'm like, oh, fucking awesome. So I can boom in, we go. And I walked in, and I'm straight over, and I'm standing at the eagle like this. Like this. No. And I'm like, oh no! No, God, please, no, 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 eagle. And I'm like, what do you mean, no eagle? I've been waiting, and he's like, no eagle. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you can have one of the little hot stuff devil heads. And I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. How fucking old are you? And I was like, a devil, I mean, a devil head's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I was fucking stoked. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So the devil head on the wall was the, the and I, the sad end, I'm going to, spoiler alert, I listened to other tattooers who told me for years that it was a shit tattoo, and I covered it. And that's one of only three, now I'm covered from head to toe, and I only have three tattoo regrets. Two of them I'll share with you another time, but one of them is that I covered up that devil head, I wish I hadn't. Um, but that's a different story. Anyway, on the wall it had the devil head with the horns, the red face, the green eye shadow banner, and it had your name written in the banner, obviously. And uh, being 14, getting your first tattoo, of course I'm going to put my fucking name in it. <laughs> you idiot! Uh, halfway through the tattoo, there's a big fucking thing on the wall, and uh, and, a, and a frame, and a and a yeah, little glass boxy frame thing, and it's a big fucking giant spider. And the story had the legend has it that it was a bird eating spider that looked like this, and that he caught it downstairs and blah blah blah. Which obviously, even as a 14 year old kid, I mean I grew up in a fucking rough area. And I knew it was a load of shit, but you know, as you do, you entertain people, you know, and it was quite a fun story. 
and he's like, you're looking at the spider, and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, and he told me the story, and he says, if you see the picture next to it, and I'm like, and I'm fucking, and I, I couldn't make out what the picture was, you know, and uh, he says to me, or he says to whoever it was with that was working with him, go and get the picture down, so he brings the picture over to me, and uh, he's check, look at that, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And apparently, some Mr. Scotland muscle-bound guy who, you know, can't wipe his own ass. <laughs> he came in for a back piece or something, tribal or something on his back. And um, Davey kept saying to him, look, if you start to feel sick or rough, you need to tell me. And... I'm paraphrasing, but someone along the lines of, look, look at the size of me, I'm tough as fuck, just got on with it, tattooer, I'll fucking decide. Right, okay. So the guy's sitting getting his back done, and when you're a tattooer and somebody's going to pass out, you can feel the cold coming down their back when you're doing a back piece. So David says to him, you're, you feeling all right? And he, I think the guy had said something along the lines of, I'm fucking sick of telling you, I'm fine. So like, okay. So he's leaning over and he's tattooing and the tattooing, and the next thing the guy just fucking, boom, face on the floor. Face on the floor, hunched over. Now, just for the record, you can't do this now, and neither would I want to. But they pulled his shorts down, pulled his underpants down, and stuck, I think it was a flower or stuck something in his arse, and took a picture, and that's what the fucking picture was. And this is in the middle of my tattoo, and I'm thinking, this is fucking going horribly wrong, horribly quick, you know? And he says to me, so if you feel sick or dizzy, you need to fucking tell me. And I'm like, okay, sir. It gets to the end, and uh, he's like, right, go and have a look in the mirror. And I stood up and I felt like the fucking king of the world. Oh, I've got a tattoo, it's going to be fucking awesome. Went over to the mirror, devil, banner, my name, spelt right, Stuart, spelt right. Underneath, big fucking hash leaf. And I'm like... Still on fucking high. I was like, what, second year in high school or something? Man, I was not impressed. And I went home and I'll need to ask my parents actually. I don't know if they recognised what that actually was. Um, I'll need to go and ask them. But that was a fucking, that was that was a horrible feeling. I thought, oh shit, I'm fucked now. And uh, yeah, I got suspended for school because of that tattoo. Not because of the pot leaf or the hash leaf or anything, but because I was 14 year old with a tattoo. And yeah, unfortunately I listened to another tattooist who told me it was a bad tattoo and I covered it and I wish I hadn't, but... So there's mine. That's my very first ever tattoo story. Uh, so yeah, anyway, let me know your stories and uh, we'll have a little chat back and forward and see what's what. Alright, thank you very much for watching and I do appreciate it. Peace. Bye. <laughs>try and keep this one a little bit quick because I've fucking prattled on for about 10 minutes earlier on but if it's a long video and you don't like it skip it doesn't really matter so this one is um I didn't buy this record I believe it or not I got given it by a customer um and it doesn't sound like a big deal it sounds like a very nice thing but once you realize what it is it's pretty fucking unbelievable um, I'm a huge Morrissey fan a huge Smiths fan maybe not with his politics but the music if you can set aside everything fantastic obsessed so fucking good um now me as murder is my favorite record but strange ways is, is a very close second um girlfriend in a coma great song absolutely great song however i didn't have strange ways um so i speak to a customer one day and i'm in the middle of tattooing him and he's like look i've got a special edition copy of that if you want um if you want to do my tattoo for me i'll give you the record for free 
And I was like, oh, so the exchange, I'll do you a free tattoo, you give me the record. He's like, yeah, cool. And I thought, yeah, okay, why not? Tattoo's not going to take too long. Fuck it, why not, you know? So it does a tattoo, comes in with the record next day. And, uh, yeah. Can you see that? Signed by Morrissey. Now, I know what you're thinking. Morrissey doesn't sign things and hey, if you don't have any proof, blah, 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 blah. In here, somewhere, is, oh, is it inside the sleeve. Yeah, my customer, when he was young, entered a competition with smash hits. Um, I don't know, I, I mean, I'm thankfully I'm too young to remember, but I don't know if it was a TV show. I, th I know Smash Hits magazine, but I think there might have been a TV show or a radio or something, I'm not quite sure. And uh, he got a trip to London um, and, you know, Morris, he was the Smiths were there, they were going to be performing a song or two or whatever, and um, he won this, this vinyl. And here's the, the thing from Smash Hits. I won't let you see it all because it's just got some stuff on it and there's some writing on there. And there's another couple of things that come with it. But he got to meet Morrissey and the band for just, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. But um, as you do if you were a Smiths fan back then, you usually had eyeliner on you. And uh, Morrissey's notorious for not signing stuff. But uh, he signed it there with the eyeliner. And uh, yeah, he gave me that for a tattoo, which, I mean, that's a pretty fucking special record, especially because it's got... Um, some stuff in there, it's got that smash hits thing so it's got some provenance of where it came from but yeah, I, I was blown away when he gave me it, so uh, yeah and it's a fucking great record um, last night that I dreamt someone loved me, fucking sad if you listen to it, but it's really really good stop me if you think you've heard this one before I started something I couldn't finish death of a disco dancer, I won't share you Death's at one, death at one's elbow paint a vulgar picture um, it's just a, a great album, um, I enjoy it. I don't know in the the mythology of records where it stands with diehard fans, but I like it. Pardon me, strange way here, strange ways here we come by the Smiths. Signed. Peace, see you next time. Bye.